Hi everyone, this is Daria Piano. Welcome back to my channel. And this is another video, part of the Fundamental of Piano Playing series. And this video is about the hand position and the initial basic finger movements. In my previous video, I already mentioned the proper way to sit in a lot of details. And now I'm just gonna briefly summarize the main points of how to sit at the piano so it makes your playing comfortable. You need to have three points of weight bearing. One is your feet that should be firmly on the floor. The other is this part where you sit down and you should be sitting not too far, uh, not too close, but somewhere in the middle or somewhat closer towards the front of the bench. Ideally, you want to have an adjustable bench so you can adjust the height so to be comfortable. And your height should be such a way where your elbow is slightly above or in line with the keyboard. And for your comfort level between you and the piano, you should have about an elbow room. So make sure that you comfortably can move your arms sideways because piano is a large instrument and you need to go all the way here and all the way there. And sometimes we need to move the torso and everything. So make sure you're sitting comfortably and your piano space is under your control. Okay, with the sitting position review out of the way, we can proceed to the hand position but before I do, I just want to tell you that the book I'm going to be using to help me explain certain things is this, Fundamentals of Piano Playing, The Russian Method by Olga and Leon Konis. And this book is a fantastic source of information about really fundamental things you need to understand, how the mechanism of our hands and arms works to produce a sound on the piano and how it works with the keyboard. So if any of you are adult beginners, I definitely recommend getting this book or even if you're an intermediate player and you just have a feeling that somewhere along the way you've missed some important basic concept of playing and somewhere you get tension or discomfort I would definitely recommend reading through that and perhaps you will get some revelations that will help you improve and ease your way into playing. So I will give you some close-ups for my hand here so you will have an additional camera which will be a little funny looking but at least it gives you a better view. One important thing to keep in mind before you proceed to putting your hands on the piano is how relaxed your arm should be. With the kids, I usually mention the word noodle arm, or you can say wet ropes. But for adults, for us, we can just conceptually understand that the relaxation from here all the way down, you should be able to drop your arms and they should swing freely. It should feel heavy. That's the important thing. So basically, all this weight that comes all the way from your back, all the way here transferred to our finger and our finger is responsible for supporting all the weight of our arm by this, like this, right? When I drop, it's heavy, but my finger catches that weight. It, However, here it's very important to distinguish what does it mean, relaxed, because when we play the piano, relaxation and tension are very relative terms. What does it mean? So we have, I'm going to read actually from the book here. Tension and relaxation are relative. The goal of good playing is to allow only the tension necessary to satisfy the musical requirement of a passage. This is accomplished by developing the strength and independence of the various muscles and careful attention to the mechanism while playing. The mechanism of how we produce the sound, how fingers should play, how they should move. To, to make music, right? Any muscles not in use should be relaxed. So this is the key here. When I say relaxed or free, it doesn't mean flaccid hand that just doesn't have any core, it can't support anything. It means you only make the necessary movements to produce the sound that you want. You don't, if you're not playing, you shouldn't be tense, right? So sometimes you see people playing and they play with this finger, let's say, right? And the other fingers are doing this. That means that you're doing unnecessary tension. So this is something we want to avoid. We want to make sure we're only using the muscles that are needed. It's like working out. If you're working out your uh, core, then your legs should not be hurting or your back should not be hurting, right? So if some, it shouldn't be tense. So if something is wrong. When you are used to relaxing, you can try dropping simply your heavy arm on the keys, just like this. And just catch it with your hand, that's fine. I know it sounds brutal and very ugly, but all it is is just to tell you that 
you are dropping all your weight on the keys. Later, we will learn how to catch that weight with the finger. That way, it's not going to sound ugly, that way we will just distribute this weight and give it to the finger, finger gives it to the key, and the beautiful sound comes out. If you don't learn how to relax, and if you're going to have tension, then you're not really giving all your weight, you're not really touching the bottom of the key, and your sound doesn't have a potential, doesn't have the tone and the quality that is desirable for keyboard and piano playing. Now let's move to the close-up camera. So let's discuss hand shape. Your hand should look somewhat like this, and your wrist should be slightly below your knuckles. Some people don't have the distinction. Some people say you should be in line with the knuckles as one straight line. This also works. It's really a minor difference as long as it's not above and it's not too low, okay? So this part is what's important, that this part is arched and it gives the support for your fingers because your fingers are going to go from here. If this part is down like this, then your fingers don't get any support, that the flow of weight stops here and then the fingers are on their own. They don't get any weight from here, right? This is too low. So the lowest point is your finger. And this is where it curves. Each finger on its own also should be curved. As you see, like this, each finger is curved. And even your thumb is curved inwards slightly, just like that. I hope you can see what I'm showing. Yeah, each finger is curved and the thumb is curved inwards a little bit. It's, imagine if you're holding a ball or an apple or orange, something round. Everything is curved. Same thing with the left hand. I do recommend removing your watches and rings just for the ease of movement for your wrist and for your fingers. So I don't play with a watch. Some people do. It's a preference. So to find comfortable position at the keyboard, drop your arm freely at your sides with shoulders completely relaxed. Lift your wrists to the keyboard, keeping the shoulders and arms relaxed. The weight of the arm should be supported on the key by your fingers. The arm should hang freely with the elbows completely relaxed. The elbow never moves independently and merely follows the hand and wrists. And finger should be curved with the hand and forearm level. This is what she says. The level, I tend to prefer slight wrist, slightly lower, as I said. Large cords and extensions require the finger to be more extended than normal, so the hand position will be flatter, which is fine. If you're playing something as a widespread as an octave or a big chord that's quite large, even larger than this maybe, right? you can see that it's flatter and sometimes you have to go higher with your wrist. For example, here, I really have to go high. These are extremes and generally we don't think of them when we just think about the hand position. It just looks like this. And she says here it's beneficial to practice sometimes with a lower forearm, lower than your wrist. And this is only as an exercise. Why is, it, is that helpful? To feel that weight is really given to the key, that you're really given that weight, you're lower, okay? If you are not sure whether or not you're giving all that weight, just go ahead and just do this. Press slightly more and see how heavy that feels and it should be relaxed like this. So ideally you should be able to play a note and all this just can move freely with the wrist moving and everything moving and your finger just hold on to it. Now, how does the finger go on the key? One good exercise that I give for beginner students is with a pencil, like this. Each finger down. So we're going to press on this part, meaty part, next to the nail, but not on the nail. This is too much curve, right? You don't want to... And this is too flat also. Somewhere in between. Ideally, each of the joints is slightly curved. Again, there are exceptions. Some people play with flat fingers. It's another type of technique. It is used, especially it was used more in the um, previous older times. Now less common, but it's possible. But I'm just telling you what is generally accepted as a norm. Okay? This is good. Each finger like this. It's a good way to practice. I can't see what I'm doing because I'm going to make sure I'm showing you. And the same thing here for the left end. Better for you to see this way. Okay, just practice like that. And make sure you're not putting this 
you're not uh, moving the pencil, you're moving the finger. It teaches you precision and teaches you, you hold on to this. Be strong about it. Now, the thumb is the one that is exceptional in the way it goes on the key. The thumb goes sideways again. It's slightly curved and it's going to go on the cheek, I call it, so, so cheek, and only the nail part can go. So not, about, not more. You're not going to put it here, you're not going to put it here, not here. You're going to put it right here, slightly curved, like that. Now, I'm going to show you how it goes on the keys and you will understand why thumb is different because naturally our hand is like this, right? And when the finger meets, meets the key, the natural position is like this. Even more natural is with black keys, actually, like this. So the thumb, well, let's go with the white keys. The thumb is shorter, right? And he's farther away. So he's going to end up being on the edge, which is normal and comfortable for him. All the other fingers, with thumb being here, see where they end up? Closer to the black keys. So this is the natural position. All the other fingers will go closer to the black keys towards the middle of the key, right here. And in the natural curve. You don't have to move pinky here if other fingers, to match the other fingers. It's, you know, there's a slight difference based on the size and the length of the fingers. So this is the natural position. If you put your fingers too low here, then every time you need to play with a thumb, if I'm playing here, See what I need to do? Even, even then, even if I don't put, put thumb here, even if I want to put thumb here. See what I'm doing? I'm doing an extra movement of the wrist to move. Not necessary. You want to do minimal amount of work required for the action that you need to do. Briefly to mention what to do with the black keys, but I'm sure someone is bound to ask me that question. So we're going to cover the black keys. Simply, instead of putting your finger here close to the black keys, you're going to go on the black key here, and it's on the edge, which is fine for the black key. Thumb is maybe slightly closer from the edge, just if you need to go further away, but somewhere around this area. Why is this, again, shows you how beneficial why we put uh, fingers here rather than here. Because if you need to switch between white and black key, Going from here to here requires you to do an extra movement with your hand and your wrist, which is arduous, not necessary, and it's going to create bumpy sound. You don't want that. You want as smooth as possible transition. So all you need to do is to simply touch here with the, to get the black key. So this transition becomes very natural and very smooth. Moving to the few exercises. First is the silent exercise on the keyboard. We're gonna put all five fingers on the, if you have, if you don't have an acoustic piano, if you have an electric piano, practice on the table. That's fine, it doesn't have to be the cover of the piano. So what we're gonna do is we're going to see how independently our fingers can function if we teach them to. And it teaches you finger action and we're going to start feeling the finger action coming from these knuckles, okay? And, and the stand of thumb is from here. Raise each finger four times actively, up and down. Well, four, four times is a random number. You could do five, you could do 10, but probably not more than that. So we're gonna go one. See how actively we are raising the finger to show that it can move independently. And what's most important in this exercise is, now second finger, is that each finger moves independently while other fingers and hand are not really helping. This guy is the, the weakest, number four. If you're interested more to know more about differences between the fingers and how they have different qualities, you can watch my fingering video that I do have it there. So see how hard it is for four to move independently? You can see the slight twitching in my hand even, and, and the pinky even goes slightly because they're very, very connected. Four, uh, three is the easiest. And why we start playing with three usually to learn the proper hand shape and the weight transfer from the arm to the fingers because he's right in the middle. He's the most balanced and he's very, very strong. So he can keep all the other fingers in check. Here we go, feet, right? So after you practice this, you, can, you should be able to feel how the action comes all the way from here. It's like a lever, up and down. 
This is not necessary to play all the time raising your fingers so high. Of course, we don't do that. We learn how to manage that when we need it. We use that action. When we don't, we just play from the key. But learning and understanding how it works is very important in developing the active finger. Now, the next exercise has to do with the wrist flexibility and independent motion of the wrist. We're going to start with three finger only. By the way, fingers have numbers. This is one, two, three, four, five. Same with the other hand, one, two, three, four, five. And we're gonna start with three. On any note, wherever is comfortable, better probably either in front of you or slightly to the sides, but not right here, because you don't wanna have your elbows close to your body. So right, let's do it here, CC. Okay, now wrist. Make sure that your wrist is relaxed, meaning it's able to move while your finger is still holding the note. You can do these round movements, round motions, making sure your finger is holding onto the note. And now, going on one, press down. On two, raise your wrist, only the wrist. Fingers not raised, fingers still holding. Then down on three, on four, back to normal position. One more time. One, two, three, four. You can move to the next note. D, one, two, three, four. One more time, left hand. One, two, three, four. Now, important thing to understand here is the independence of the wrist movement. Wrist is moving and then the elbow is just following, right? I'm not really moving anything else. I'm not moving my shoulder. I'm not moving my elbow. I'm not moving my finger, only the wrist, right? The impulse comes from here, look. So one more time, I'm gonna go. One, two, wrist, right? Three, down, four, back to the initial position. Look at the elbow. I can hold on to it and uh, one, two. If it moves slightly, it's because it follows the wrist. Three, four. So once in, you can do a circle motion again. Once you understand that the uh, wrist can move separately without making the finger being relaxed and weak, finger is strong, the wrist is maneuverable, relaxed, flexible, flexible, right? That's important. Another important thing to learn right away is how to release the key. It's very important to do it properly because it has to do with the micro relaxations that we need to learn how to do in order to be able to sustain long and arduous passages or any kind of finger work that requires a lot of um, energy that we need to know how to relax and to release the energy. All right, so very simple. When you press the key down, you need to lift. And when you lift, you need to make sure you're not lifting like this because when you lift like this, what happens is your weight is still suspended. That means you're still supporting, you somehow you're doing some movement to sustain your hand in the air because if it was relaxed from here, it would drop and it will feel heavy, right? So what we need to do is to learn to release from the wrist, up and drop. This is that moment that you have to relax and really drop all that weight. No, you don't have to hold it. You hold this now, now drop it. Drop that weight, you don't have to hold it. Not right now. Wrist can have it now, right? And again, wrist goes first, leads the way, fingers up, uh, oh sorry, fingers <laughs> go, when you go up with your hand, fingers always face down. If you notice you're doing this, drop. There we go, right? So I would recommend just practicing again, only with three, just because three is the most balanced and is easier to give it weight. Just practice like this, across the keyboard. I know it seems like a very boring and slow kind of moving exercise, but it is really not boring if you're understanding it and physically having that connection with your movement and the key. That's fascinating how that works and that we need to be aware of what's happening between us and the key. Now we're gonna take that exercise to the next level is including all the five fingers and we're gonna do count on every one of them. And we're gonna do it non legato, which means separating the notes, not connected. So we go one, I'm actually so sorry, I'm gonna show you left hand easier. One, two, three, 
two, three, four. Lift and relax, making sure it's, we're releasing the weight. Two, one, two, three, four. Only the wrist. Relax, release. Three, one, two, three, four. Relax, release. One, two, three, four. Try to keep each finger curved while you're doing it. One, two, three, four. If you get an impulse to raise your shoulder while you're doing some wrist movement, try to fight it. Try to <laughs> tell your shoulder, you're not moving. It's independent movement. It's only the wrist, right? And again, like I said, curving the finger is important. Try to hold on to the curved finger as much as you can. I know for if you're going up, you might need to straighten, straighten it, which is fine. The most important thing is to never go flat, not flat, sorry, to never go inwards. Flat is okay. I Again, it's an exception. I don't recommend it. Always best to curve each joint and curve it outwards, not inwards. This is the one of the worst habits you can develop as a beginner pianist. And it's very hard to get rid of it. Okay, so this makes your finger weak because you don't really have much control of precision of how you touch. So any nuances will be really hard to control with your fingers like this. And it gives it a very weak type of attack and it's just not pretty and your tone is going to be very flat and ugly. So you don't want that. So make sure you are aware of your finger going curved this way, remember? Not too much, you don't want to go on your nail. You want to go like that. And again, it's a recap of what I said before. Once you're comfortable with this exercise non-legato, which means not connected, you can move it to the next level and try doing legato. Legato is an Italian term indicating smoothly connected movements of the notes. So you uh, press one key and transfer smoothly to the next key. And only when the next key receive that note, receive the weight, sorry, then you release the other key. That's legato. I'm gonna make a separate video on articulations and I will speak more in detail about it, but for now it's just very basic. Basically not connected, non legato, air in between, relaxing. When you do legato, you don't air in between, you just go like this, right? The important is to not hold over, don't do this, right? Just release it, okay. So when you do legato, same thing. You can start with one, one, two, three, four. Raise your finger, active finger, that's important. Two, one, two, three, four, raising, one, two, three, four, raising four, and even five can go, it's fine. They can go together, it's hard to go without. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. The tricky part about five is because he is uh, the outer finger, he can get a lot of support of the hand and he can go lazy and he can go, he can be like this, right? Which means laying down, he doesn't want to do work, he wants the hand to help him out. And try to catch yourself, when you do this, try to strengthen him by, him by making him stand. This is what you want, you don't want this with your pinky. That's just something to warn you about right away because he's gonna tend to do that. If you're having trouble with your finger developing this independent movement from going higher, you can simply <laughs> help from here, holding this part a little bit, or you can help by literally doing this with the other hand, which is just, especially with four. With four, you can notice that like it needs help. You can, it's fine. Do whatever you need to do to feel that independent movement of the forefinger, even if it needs help as like assisted push up or pull up, <laughs> pull up in this case. And the last exercise in this episode will be this one for five fingers, independent raising movement of fingers and playing without moving anything else, without moving wrist, without moving elbow. It's calm wrist, calm hand, and just the finger doing the work, one at a time. I'm going to go one, release without leaving the key, up, aiming high and then landing, two, you release, three, aiming, only the finger. See, this is all still, this is still. Shoulders still, nothing else is moving. Four, see four is weaker, right? So you can help yourself by doing this if you need. Now the stronger, right? And five. And again, as I said before, watch out for five doing this. Make sure he doesn't, make sure he's standing. I'm gonna show you the right hand now. 
two, three, four, five. Five is actually quite quite strong again, and because he gets help from the hand, right? This muscle should be working. You should feel this muscle. Four, three, two, and one again. Okay, once you're comfortable, you can try doing it at the same time. Mirror finger, so one. Sorry, four, because four wanted help, see? Even for me, four is hard. You can go much slower if it takes time for you to activate that finger. You need to think about it. It's a lot of brain work, right? And muscle, it's a connection. Doing all these exercises, it will help you really understand fundamentally how our movements work that from the tiny, tiny movement that we do and what movements are necessary. So when you do this, you know how little is really required for us to make a sound. So this should hopefully give you an idea of when the extraneous movements come, you know that they're not needed. You will know that you, can, you need to eliminate them just because they're not helping and they're not necessary. To sum up what I covered in this video, briefly, you need to make sure you're sitting properly, giving yourself a comfortable space to work with. You need to make sure that your arms are relaxed before you start playing so no weight is suspended anywhere, you don't have any tension. And do remember that tension and relaxation when it comes to playing the piano are relative terms and you need to only engage the muscles that are required to perform a certain action and other parts should be calm and not used and not be tense. Now, when it comes to putting your hand, make sure it's in such a shape where it has a curved arch here, slightly below the wrist or in line. Each finger is curved on its own, including the thumb, and not curved inwards like that. Never do that. When you press with the thumb, it should go on the edge, only the nail part. Fingers, other fingers closer to the black keys in the natural position. And Last but not least is how to move your wrist and make sure it's relaxed and malleable when you're producing a sound. Make sure when you release the key, your wrist goes up and the fingers are relaxed and the, they release that weight. When they were holding the weight before, they need to release it and you need to learn doing that very well. So wrist has its own independent assignments <laughs> to do. And of course, we learn how to engage our fingers all the way from here to activate them and to learn that smaller muscle movements. Okay, I hope this was helpful and this should give you enough information to cover the bases and I will keep posting more into the series. And feel free to purchase the book if you like the way that uh, the information was presented. It's similar to the way the book works. They're very fundamental things and I apologize if that was boring for someone, but it really needs to be assimilated on a very core level in order to then use it all the time as a second nature because these are the most fundamental things. And if we miss something here in the beginning, then later on we'll have a gap that is going to be hard to fill with something if we don't understand where that gap comes from. And as always, thank you for watching, for supporting my channel, for leaving comments, for putting likes and stay tuned for more videos.